This is Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, Ashley Brown and John Hart. Eagle Way Stadium on the campus of Georgia High School. In beautiful Augusta, Georgia, it is week 12 of Game Night Live, and our final stop this regular season 2017 brings us to uh, Eagle Way Stadium and the annual Richmond County Battle for Bragging Rights, one of the biggest rivalries in our area. It is Laney and it is Josie. And I am John Hart, joining once again, joined once again by Ashley Brown. Matt Lane will join us from down on the field here in just a moment. A.B., both of these two teams have struggled a lot, but when these two teams play, there is always a lot on the line. The cliche, you can throw yeah. the records out. It's true. You really can with this one. Obviously, they looked at this one all year. They want to beat each other flat out. No love lost, certainly, between Laney and Josie. Laney, 2-7 and seven on the year, 2-4 and four in the region. Josie, 1-8 and eight winless in the region. It is time for the coin toss. Let's take it down to Matt Lane. Gentlemen, my name is Mr. Nichols. That's Mr. Williams. That's Mr. Bonecutter. That's Mr. Williams. We got Mr. Horn. And we have Mr. Eubanks and Mr. Smalls. We're going to officiate the game now. You're the captain. Do you know what captain's job is? Take care of the garbage, right? If you take care of the garbage, we don't have to. If we have to take care of the garbage, we throw flags, right? See this belly on me, gentlemen? I don't get it. Don't like it when I got to get bent over and pick up a flag. So if I get mad night, whose fault is it? Exactly. All right, you're the visiting team, so you're going to call it a coin toss. I got a butt and a head. You agree? Got a head and a butt. You agree? Yes, sir. Call loud enough for Mr. Williams to hear. Tails. He called tails. I have a head, sir. You have won the toss. What do you want to do? Receive. All right. Josie's won the toss, elect to receive. What goal do you want to fend? Or in other words, which way you want to kick? You want to kick this way? All right. Laney, do me a favor. Josie, come to the scoreboard. Josie's won the toss and elected to receive. You're going to bring your kick receiving team out. You're going to bring your kicking team out, all right? Gentlemen, go shake hands and get your teams for me. They've got a good quarterback, Mario Sumter. They've got to give him time to throw the football. And also, special teams could be big in this game. Both teams have a lot of athletes. Win that special teams battle if you're the Laney Wildcats. Looking at the home team from Josie, don't turn the ball over. You, you need every possession in this game, and you've got to establish the run against a bigger Laney front. So Josie's offense will take the field first, and we will get our look at an Eagles uh, team that, uh, A.B., I, I, I was doing game prep today. Uh, I, I, one stat jumped out at me more than any other stat I've seen this entire season, and that is Josie hasn't scored a point against Laney since 2010. It's been unbelievable how they, and trust me, the Laney folks have <laughs> let Josie hear about it since 2010. <laughs> but yeah, they have absolutely dominated this series, and. Uh, but Laney's a little down this year. This is going to be a tight one. There come the Wildcats. We will take a break and be back with the kickoff. It's Laney and Josie on Game Night Live. The Josie Eagles set to take the field one last time here in this 2017 season. And there they are. Well, the Josie Eagles, the 1995 state champions, that team, one of the finest teams Georgia's ever produced, arguably the best defense and certainly the best defensive secondary in the history of Georgia High School. On that, In that secondary alone, John, you had Deion Grant who went to Tennessee, Troy Talbert who went to Georgia Tech, John Fielding who signed at Alabama, and the best one of all of them might have been on Mark Tolbert who tore up his knee and, and, you know, unfortunately for him, had several knee issues and wasn't able to play in college. That secondary, the whole team was unbelievable. They went 15-0 that year and claimed the state title right here. They won it at this stadium back when it was known as White Road Stadium. Josie coached by Raleigh Roundtree, a Josie alum who also went on to play in the NFL. Yep, he played in the NFL and was a standout at South Carolina State. As a matter of fact, he is the brother of the sheriff of Richmond County, Richard Roundtree. So we'll keep it in line up here in the booth tonight. We're sure the sheriff is tuning in if he's not down here on the sidelines. So the Cats will kick it away. Mario Williams boots it off. And the kick is taken inside the 10-yard line by Xavier Reed. Reed's got some room still on his feet. Good return up to the 41-yard line. 
Well, Region Kid getting some college looks. North Greenville, Benedict, Fort, uh, Fort Valley State, Clark out of Atlanta. We said when the special team battle was big for Laney. Right now, Josie takes first stab at it with a nice return here from Reed. Reed also one of the very few seniors on this Josie team. In fact, both of these teams extremely young this year. Yeah, Josie with just three seniors. As a matter of fact, they've got six freshmen on the varsity. Only 25 total players dressed tonight for the Eagles. And it has been a struggle on offense for this Eagle team, averaging just 13 points a game. And the kick goes up the middle, or kick, the handoff goes up the middle, so I'll give him two or three yards. Well, the problem for Josie John, they just don't have any size. I looked on the roster, they only have two kids over 220 and only five kids over 200. They just don't have the size to compete with some of the other teams. When they're facing Screven and Jefferson County and some of these schools, even Laney tonight, look at Laney's size compared to the front from Josie. It's night and day, and that, that's been their problem this year. They gave him three yards on the carry. And this time it'll be DeKale Fuellen rolling out, throwing, completing, cross midfield, and a first down for the Eagles. So the Eagle offense is looking good here early. Jalen Tolbert on the season, and he comes up like that. They need to get more players named Tolbert in this history. Uh, sport. <laughs> Round three, Tolbert. <laughs> they have had a lot of good Tolberts. Troy, Armark. Of course, uh, not the only ones. Najee Tolbert, who's known as Buck, was a great basketball player here and football player. And got, eight, got a number of them. Got eight yards on the pass play in Delaney territory. They're at the 48. Jalen is the son of our Mark Tolbert, who, you know, could go down. You know, people could argue maybe the best player in Josie history, even though Deion Grant went on to play 12 seasons in the NFL. On that team that year, if you asked him, Got him off sides on the defense. Team, he might have said the senior over the team, oh, the senior on Mark Tolbert. And it's funny you mentioned Deion Grant because that is what they call a harbinger for our Stump AB trivia question uh -oh. in the fourth quarter. Uh-oh. The penalty will move the ball up to the 44-yard line, so the Eagles on the move here early. What I love about Dion is, even though he played 12 in the NFL, lived in New York at times, he always come, he, and he, and he comes back and does a lot of stuff with the kids in this community still. You bet. Flewellen for Myron Godby. That's a name we will call a lot here tonight. He is the straw that stirs the drink for this Josie offense, and he is up to the 39-yard line, a pickup of... Uh, Call it seven yards. Take a look at the Josie offense there, A.B. Yeah, Flewellen, the sophomore, talented young quarterback. Expect big things from him over the next couple of years. And as you mentioned, Godby and Tolbert, two very good receivers. The line a little bit small, and they're going to have their hands full tonight with that big laning defensive line. Actually got nine on that pass play, and that's going to be another first down and then some straight up the gut. And that is Jacoby Ham, a junior. Well, give uh, Josie credit. They've come out here and got a nice return, and now they've established a pretty good drive. See if they can keep it going. Nothing fancy either. Just a couple of pass plays, but nothing deep. They're just getting their quarterback. They took advantage of Laney early in the game trying to be over-aggressive. They did a little naked bootleg with the quarterback and found a receiver open in the flats. Both rows tonight have looked good from Llewellyn as well. well. Both of these teams have struggled mightily on defense as we're going to have another flag, and that's going to back Laney up even closer to its goal line. So it'll be first and five for the Eagles. Laney got offside oh, the defense, still first down. The offside's call. Both of these teams allowing exactly 40 points a game on defense. Yeah, it's been a struggle, uh, and, and Laney's not used to it. Laney's been the class of Richmond County. You could throw Aquinas in there the last few years, but among the, the Richmond County schools uh, that play at the higher levels, Laney's been the class by far. It hasn't been close. I mean, you're talking about in the last 15 years, single-digit losses to their opponents in Richmond County. They have dominated, but they've come back to the pack this year after graduating a lot of talented players. Keep an eye on a kid on defense. He's really, when he's on offense, even better maybe. And that's defensive end Jordan Stringer, number 28. He's just a freshman. I think he's got a great, great future. Another good one is sophomore Chad Welcher and also Donald Henley, who's a standout on the football team. He's in that secondary wearing number eight. Second and five from the 26-yard line as Ham was on the last carry. Flewellen. Wants to throw, in trouble, and almost intercepted. 
Well, that was Chad Welcher who got a hand on it for Laney. Yeah, that would have been a terrible <laughs> way to end the strike because it would have been six if he was able to you know, get his hands underneath it. Not a good decision by the quarterback there. He was in trouble. Either run it and just take that sack or run to the, you know, and try to get rid of the football as close as you can, but definitely throw it out of bounds. You mentioned how this is unusual for Laney to struggle like this. Laney has won four region titles this century, the last one coming in 2015, but again, just two and seven on the year, two and four in the region. And I went back the last time we had Laney was looking at their record against Richmond County teams, and it was astonishing. I mean, every year they'd go 7-1, and 7-0, and 8-0, oh, 7-1. Oh, and one. I mean, just, they just don't lose to their opponents in Richmond County are off. And here's a big play for Josie. Yeah, got the inside the 10, and that'll take the Eagles down inside the Augusta Technical College red zone as they needed five yards. And they picked up, well, about 16, and it'll be first and goal Eagles. Yeah, Myron Godby, nothing fancy again, just a simple pass play. As a matter of fact, there were – Two Laney defenders right by the receiver, but Fluella made a nice pass. And they are in the Augusta Technical College red zone here. Josie with a very impressive opening drive for a team that's been struggling offensively this year. Out of the gun is Fluella. And the give will be to Godby. He'll pick up two, maybe three yards up close to the seven yard line before he's knocked down. Looked like Ron Foreman was the first one in there. Yeah, one guy Laney is missing right up the middle is Six foot three, 320 pound defensive tackle Tyrone Truesdale, who's now playing at Auburn. He's a freshman with the Tigers, and for the last three years, he's been the dominant force in the middle of that def defensive line. And I know two years ago, when he was a junior, he absolutely he dominated the game against Josie like I haven't seen a defensive player dominate a game in a long time. And he was in the backfield as much as the running backs for Josie was. Well, the Eagles six yards away from scoring on Laney for the first time in six years, and they have done it. For the first time in any of these Eagles' careers, they have put points on the board against the Wildcats. Touchdown, Josie. Well, I said at our preseason uh, banquet with the coaches and captains, I said, at marking this game, I said this might be a year where Josie can get some revenge because Laney's going to be a little bit down. I got some weird looks from some of the Laney <laughs> players when I was leaving, but this is what I'm talking about. In this game, they came ready to play tonight against this uh, big, big-time rival of theirs. No doubt, biggest rival they face all year. And the Eagles will go for two. So no Georgia Military College kicks for college in this instance. Real impressive drive Flewellen. by Josie. Flewellen will keep. Running for his life, and he will not get there as he is dragged down by Dykes King, and the two-point conversion is no good. So with 7.36 to play here in quarter number one, Josie leads Laney six to nothing. Let's go, Eagles! Living with... Josie strikes first and leads Laney six to nothing still early in the first quarter. Well, you gotta give him credit. That was a terrific drive, and here they just kind of kick it along the ground, trying to stop any chance to run back. Here's the question I was talking about. This kid is very impressive stringer. And you saw Laney early in the year against Screven County of, you know, they got beat pretty handily in that game, but this is the one kid that stood out to me. I actually checked that. Was that 28 or 88? Yeah, that was 88. That, that was, was 88. Was great. But I'm sure Stringer appreciates the airtime. <laughs> well, he's a, yeah, he played great in that game, and they had him listed as a starter on the offense. Just a ninth grader. They've got a couple of ninth graders that start. Jalen Lovett in the secondary starts as well. This Laney offense has started to wake up, averaging 30 points a game in the last two weeks. Well, they can throw the ball. Mario Sumter can throw the football when given time. And look at the formation here. They're As just coming with the power against a smaller team. Again, they will go with Graham, who just trucks his way up to the 49-yard line. Or 45-yard line. Yeah, that, 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 that was, actually that was, was the freshman, yeah. We'll get it right in a minute. That was Stringer. Yeah, like I said, this kid is going to have a big, big future here at Laney High School. He can run the football. He's already got pretty good size for just being a ninth grader. We, I wouldn't put him up in the class with Cameron Garnett, but he's but – he's, but he's pretty darn good. And they'll need, they can pick up a first down, and again, they will go to Stringer up the, oh, that's not Stringer. Can't see who that is. 
Well, Game Night Live is presented each week by our friends at McDonald's. Don't miss out on McDonald's new buttermilk crispy tenders, juicy cuts of chicken, seasoned just right. Use every last morsel of our tenders to get every last drop of our delicious sauces, like this new signature uh, sauce, which is the Sriracha Mac Sauce. Prices of participation may vary. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And it was Chad Welcher on that uh, carry, picking up eight into Josie territory. And again, the Cats will keep it on the ground. And again, it is Jordan Stringer, the talented freshman, pushing his way ahead for a couple more. Again, they feel like they can enforce their will with that big offensive line against the smaller Josie team. And they're running the ball, keep in mind, with a freshman and a sophomore. I mean, those are the two guys that have run the ball on this drive so far. Big third down early in this ball game. And they will try it up the middle, and I don't know. It will depend on the spot. Looks like they got a really good spot. Yeah, they did get a good spot, Real and that will be spot. a first down. Because I didn't think he got it when he first hit the pile, but he got a good spot. Uh, and Laney's just coming with a power formation, which we really haven't seen from them much in the past. Because trust me, at some point you'll see them air it out a little bit, and here they go to a little different formation where they do have some wide receivers split out for Sumter. But they will continue to keep it on the ground. And again, it is Stringer, and he will have the sideline up to the 31-yard line and close to another first down. Well, they had Springer on the left side, and he came back with a pitch. And what I like about that, your other two backs, your wing back and your full back, become extra lead blockers. You don't have to pull an offensive lineman. Uh, you're able to just lead with those two backs, and that's what they did there to pick up some nice yardage, about eight or nine. Nine to be exact, so second and one. Well, both teams moving the football on one another. Mario Sumter, the quarterback for Josie, under center. And he will keep and be thrown for a loss. Uh, maybe no gain. He might have gotten back to the original line. Well, this Josie team, or this Laney team, I should say, will like I said, scoring 30 points a game the last two. The problem is they're averaging giving up 40, and it's tough to win that way. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're a prideful group. I mean, they have, again, they've had sustained success for a long period of time going back to Eric Parker and then Lynn Lackey and now Rodney McFadden, and they've had, again, sustained success for a long period of time. And on the forward progress, they did give Laney a first down on the feet of Sumter, so this time they will go back to... This is Maurice Page just making men fall down, and then he loses the football and got back on it at the 21-yard line, so it's still going to end up being about a 10-yard gain after all of that. That's a big young man right there running the football. I don't, he's not quite as big as the kid from Screven County, C.J. Wright, but he's awfully big. Look at that. Augusta Paint Center hit of the game. Have we had a running back do it yet this year? Because that might be it. That was a couple of Augusta Paint Center uh, hit of the game nominees on the same run there. So very impressive for Maurice Page. Yeah, no wonder they've gone to the three running back set. You got Big Page in there, and then you got two good young ones behind him in Stringer and Welcher. He picked up nine on the carry. Little trickeration straight up the middle. It is Chad Welcher inside the 15 yard line. He'll fall to 14. Yeah, they set that up earlier with the play where they did pitch it to Stringer. You got to worry about that as you saw Stringer go in motion, and then they just hand the little counter right up to Welcher. And if Welcher had broke that outside, he might have been able to pick up some bigger yardage there. And that puts the Wildcats into the Augusta Technical College red zone. First and goal at the nine. Laney trying to beat Josie for the eighth straight time and 15th time in the last 16 meetings between these two. It has been dominated by the Wildcats, and this one will get back maybe a yard, yard and a half to about the eight. Now, the, again, Laney, that was a different back that time for Laney. And Jarvis 33. Washington. All right, all of tonight's uh, field goals and extra points brought to you by Georgia Military College. While Georgia Military College enjoys a rich military history, you won't hear any drill sergeant barking orders at the Augusta campus. Because there's no military obligation or uniforms required, everyone is welcome to attend. Georgia Military College, start here, go anywhere. Second and goal from the eight. And this time the carry is Jordan Stringer. Stringer through the middle. Touchdown. <laughs> Well, the freshman who, again, very impressive young man, and that time on that drive, he had some nice runs. They mixed it in with the big fullback, and 
there he's able to punch it in. But, you, again, they're mixing up the plays really well as well, keeping Josie off balance, uh, faking the handoff one way and going the other. So the Wildcats answer the Josie score, and the Cats will try a Georgia Military College kicks for college. Well, we'll well, it looks like they're going to go for two, so we won't, won't have a Georgia Military College kicks for college. And how about that? Very interesting formation with everybody bunched on the left side, but it didn't work out very well. So, 327 left in the first quarter. We are tied 6-all from Eagle Way. Six, Laney and Josie to finish the regular season of Game Night Live. And the Eagles will return. And knocked down, well, he's still on his feet, still trying to gain yards and falling forward up to about the 16-yard line was Xavier Reed. So that's where the Eagles will set up. This is a series that has been dominated by Laney. They have won 37 of the 51 meetings prior to tonight as we take another look at the return. Lost his footing, but able to regain it and get a couple extra yards. Well, we were talking about Laney's, or excuse me, Josie's 95 state title team and all the talent on that squad. You know, Laney's got some great alum as well, going back to Emerson Boozer, Chip Banks, uh, both of which played in the NFL. Uh, Boozer with the, was in Super Bowl three with the Jets, and Chip Banks was a star at Southern Cal and was a first-round draft pick and a standout in the NFL as well. Nine total NFL players from Laney, to be exact. And the Eagles have produced four of their own, including your friend Arnold Harrison. Yeah, Pittsburgh Arnold, Arnold, I remember seeing Arnold uh, when he was a sophomore in high school at a summer basketball game. And because of the teams had the same jersey colors, they made Josie do shirts. And I said, wait a second, that guy doesn't need to be playing basketball. He needs to be playing football. I didn't know who he was at the time. And, of course, he ended up being a great, great football player here and played at Georgia and went on to play in the NFL with uh, – what was that team? I can't remember. Uh, maybe Matt Lane can help us out. <laughs> and there it is. Your, your Steelers <laughs> reference of the game brought to you by Ashley Brown. No gain on first down for Fluellen. Four wide now for the Eagles. Fluellen wants a big chunk of it and overthrows Reed, who was running step for step with... Let's see who that was back there for Laney, and that was Mario Sumpter. Flewellen just threw the ball running against his body, avoiding traffic, and threw it 50 yards in the air. He's a 10th grader. Impressive. <laughs> pretty, pretty good throw there. Overthrew it a little bit, but he showed he's got some arm strength if he needs it. Well, much like the Laney offense, this jo uh, Josie offense came to life a little bit last week. They scored 30 points. The only problem is that they gave up 72 to to fifth, well, fifth round or seventh ranked Jefferson County. They were playing a monster. Jefferson County is one of the best teams in the state in, that class, in this classification, and they have two phenomenal quarterbacks. And keep an eye next year, a potential player of the year candidate for next year in the area, Jaden Jenkins, who's one of those two QBs. They need 10 yards on third down. And up to, yeah, I don't think they're, they're going to say that's incomplete as he was juggling it as he went out of bounds. That's and tough, right? Because if he knew yeah. where he was on the field, that's an easy catch. But mm -hmm. he didn't get it. He, he didn't realize where it was exactly or how close to the sidelines. Yep. First foot. Yep. First foot out of bounds. You mentioned Jefferson County. While our focus is here tonight, there are a lot of other big matchups around the area, uh, including playoff games on the South Carolina side that we'll be keeping up with for you. But on the Georgia side, you've got Jefferson County and Screven County, both unbeaten, playing for a region title. Evans can win a region title tonight, as can Aquinas. So a lot of matchups we'll be keeping an eye on as we go forward here. And, of course, you can catch all those games tonight with Football Friday Night right here on uh, WJBF. At 11.35, 30 minutes dedicated to high school football in the area. Might be the biggest show of the year so yeah, far. Yeah. I, and it's a bigger night on Football Friday night for another special region too, John. Yes, sir. Border Bowl 5 rosters will be announced tonight, so you don't want to miss Football Friday night. 11.35 coming up over on WJBF News Channel 6. And, again, this is our last regular season broadcast, but we will be back with you on January 6th at 11 a.m. 
for Border Bowl 5. Well, yeah, and of course we'll be over at Laney High School where the, it's been the site of the Border Bowl since its inception. And the thing has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. They do a great job promoting it on social media. Uh, go and follow all the pages, whether it's Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can get all the information you need right there. And, of course, WJBF.com as well. This is Stringer. He's got a blocker in front of him. Here goes Stringer into Josie territory. But hold up. There is a flag down back at midfield. Well, that's going to negate about a 25 with yep. the 88. 88. And they're saying it was on 88. Yeah. I'm that's 88 white. I got holding on the offense. Wide receiver Jay Gray. 88. So that'll back the Cats up and negate what was a big play. Yeah, huge play. And take them all the way back down to the 41-yard line. Well, both teams could do no wrong in their first possession. Second possession for Josie did not go so well, and this one starts off with a bad break for Laney on that penalty call. Final 100 seconds of quarter number one. And the quarter going by quickly as the Cats continue to run the ball. This is Jarvis Washington pushing ahead for a first down and into Josie territory all the way to the 41-yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they got a freshman, a sophomore, and now here's the junior, Jarvis Washington, coming through. Picked up of 18 yards. And it'll be first and 10 Laney from the 40. If they keep pounding it on him with this run, a throw from Sumter is going to be wide open. That was well. You feel like they're sucking him in with yeah. all these runs. Because they do like to throw it. I mean, last week Sumter had a big game. That was Welcher. Welcher tripped up as he... Went in, pick up a four yards. Ran into that young man. I was uh, before the season started buying my son some cleats, and there was a pretty good looking athlete sitting there trying on the same exact shoes. And I started talking to him, and it was it ended up being Chad Welcher, who was real excited there about the season starting for Laney. And, and you know, of course, being a sophomore, he didn't play much in varsity last year, so I'd not heard of him. And he was telling me he was expecting a big season, and good for him. He's starting now. It's just a tenth grader. Toss sweep to Washington, and he will have another first down inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. That might be the final play of the first quarter. May sneak in one more snap. Let's take a quick look at this Laney offense while we have a second. Well, Sumter, the senior, is the leader, and he is the leader in all respects. I mean, uh, and you'll find out about that a little bit later. Up front, they're a little bigger than uh, Josie, and one of the leaders there is Moss, uh, the sophomore who's at uh, left tackle. It is Sumter under center on first and 10. And yet another handoff, and this one's going to go all the way down to the 16-yard line. And Jordan Stringer, they just keep running fresh backs at you. Yeah, I tell you, they, they've got some good-looking ones. I don't think any of them look better than this kid, though. Washington may be a little quicker. Welcher may be a little stronger. But all together, I think this kid's the best back of the group and certainly with the best future just being a ninth grader. Picked up another first down inside the Augusta Technical College red zone. And I believe that will do it for the first quarter. So the Cats are set up inside the red zone. When we come back, we are through one quarter of play at Eagle Way with your score. The Laney Wildcats 6, the Josie Eagles 6. <laughs> 